Hey everyone, how's it going? Uh, my name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. If you guys like investing in some of the most undervalued assets in the world, this is the channel for you. Click subscribe. I'll show you how to value things using ratios uh, and then investing in those undervalued assets. So today I'm going to look at charting, but I'm going to use weekly candlesticks instead of daily candlesticks. And sometimes charting things in a weekly candlestick time period looks a little bit different than a daily. It kind of eliminates all the daily noise. So this, these are much larger, longer patterns, and they're weekly long candlesticks. So let's dive in and see how, how some of our companies look from a weekly candlestick perspective. So I'm charting weekly candlesticks instead of daily to see which companies have monster breakouts. And I'm going to look at some of the other uh, indicators and see what they're telling us. So this is the 30-year U.S. Treasury yield, and it looks like we're breaking back above this support line right now, and we're also breaking this downtrend. It's a double break, double whammy. And what, why, do I, why do I keep looking at the 30-year U.S. Treasury yield? I look at it to see what bondholders are doing. If they're selling and interest rates are going higher, they think inflation is here. We have real negative rates. And remember, this is the 30 year and it's a little bit less manipulated than the 10 year. The, the Federal Reserve has quantitative easing and they're in there doing yield control curve, they're doing all this stuff. So this could be manipulated, but nonetheless, it is going up. Next is the US dollar index. And I just want to step back here and show you last commodity bull market from 2000 to 2008, you could see the dollar really decline. And really what you'll see is you'll see emerging markets going up. You'll see a outperformance of the euro in relationship to the dollar. And what we're seeing is that exact setup. We're seeing an emerging markets breakout. We're seeing the euro outperform the dollar, and we're also seeing the dollar be weak here. So, I, I mean, we could see this dollar come back up and touch this big rail here and then come and roll back over, but it's not, it's not going to be a long-term a, a long movement. I think we broke the major trend here, and the path of least resistance is down, even if we have a short-term, you know, kind of pulling it back up. Next is gold. Gold's in this upward channel on a weekly basis because the chart looks a little bit di different on a weekly basis. And it looks like we're right there on support. I'm very curious to see where gold goes next. Does this support line hold or do we just blow right through it? We do have a lot of momentum coming down because if you look, this is a continuation pattern. If you have big down days like this and then it kind of fights its way back up and contracts, it gets hit again. Now that might have been the last hit. I'd like to see this thing move on up and higher just like all of you guys want to see it. But I gotta, we got to see if this thing holds. And if this thing holds, if this line holds, and we start moving on up, I would say it's, it's game on for, for cost averaging in. I've got silver here, too, on a weekly candlestick chart. Big move higher. And then this is all the sellers have. So it's just a matter of time before this moves on up. All the conditions are in place. We've got the big momentum coming to the upside and we're moving sideways on it. This is all the sellers have. We do have a down candlestick here, bearish engulfing. And we do have a little update, which may mean that we have a little bit more downside to go before we move on up. Here's the gold to platinum ratio. And gold's been outperforming platinum since 2008. What that means is this was a bull market in commodities back here. And in between, gold outperformed platinum between these two bull markets. The bull market, commodities bull market's coming, and I expect this to go, blow out to the downside, and I expect this to go all the way back down to two or below. That means one ounce of platinum can buy more than two ounces of gold if it goes below 0.5. I fully expect that to happen to come all the way back down here at the end, by the end of the bull market. We may even see higher than that. Here's platinum to palladium. Again, we broke this downtrend, or right, we're right at this line downtrend. Maybe we broke it, maybe we didn't. It's very close. 
uh, but I expect this to outperform palladium. So platinum outperforming palladium, and I expect it to go on up. <clears throat> Here's emerging markets. This is a clear break. And last bull market, we, we absolutely, emerging markets absolutely killed it. Just absolutely destroyed it. We went sideways this entire time because the dollar was very strong in relationship to other currencies. And now we broke out to the upside. This is more information, more confluence, saying that we have a commodities bull market right ahead of us. It also means that EEM is a good investment right now. Maybe this back, test, back to the top line here a little bit because it has had a very good run. Maybe not. We'll see what happens. But it's a breakout. Here's Norilsk Nickel. This one's looking great. It's right at the top of this large pattern from the last bull market. This thing breaks to the upside. <laughs> this is going to run. This is going to be Cheetah. Cheetah speed higher. I liked it. I, I like this company. I was buying it all through here. I think it's going to go much, much higher. VALE, these are all the diversified miners. Go, coming on down, broke to the upside, looking fantastic. Will this pull back a little bit? Potentially it could. We've had a very good run here. So maybe it will pull back a little bit and then head on higher. Southern Copper, same thing. Clear breakout, looking good. Rio Tinto, same thing, breaking out. And BHP, breaking out. So the diversified miners are looking great on a weekly chart uh, basis. Shoulder, head, shoulder. This is going to be a big boy to the upside. If this went down to 15, and this is 55, basically where the neckline is, man, that's 40 bucks above 55. That's at least a $95 stock. That's a, that's a big pattern. Here's South 32, the last uh, diversified miner. Broke to the upside, looking great. So next, we're going into oil on a weekly candlestick basis. We've got the, the candlesticks coming down. It's been in a downtrend since 2008. Remember, inflation aspect of, of these commodities is far more important than you think. There is a supply-demand component. We are coming up on a commodities boom, and oil is going to rip it. It's going to rip it, I think. Now. We break this 60, this 60 mark, and then we break 75-ish, 78, somewhere in there. It's gone. This is going to move into a big bull market. It's not going to stop at $150 or $200. This is going to be way higher. That's my opinion. And everything we're doing today is going to exacerbate this move. We are not, people are pulling money from investments from oil to put it into green, green technologies. We've had the COVID absolute crash out where we had negative oil rates, and all of these oil companies pulled their production and supply came falling way back. When we have demand come back, whether it's this year or next year, and we don't have the investments going into oil, this is going to be a very weird scenario where oil could just absolutely blow the doors off everything. Because we don't have a lot of electric vehicles right now. We're all still using oil, and when we fire all these big caterpillar, whatever they're made, trucks to start mining ores that we haven't seen in a very long time, demand's going to go through the roof. So we'll see what happens. I mean, when the airlines start flying in, 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 you know, the majority of airlines fire up their big airplanes, when we start firing up all these big trucks to start mining again, I think oil is going to be a very good spot to be. Here's SM Energy. Uh, we, we broke out of this double downtrend line. Uh, we broke out, came back, tested, came back, and boom, we're up back in it. So that's looking decent. Now, this one looks fantastic. Centennial Development Resources broke its downtrend. You could see it paused on it, and boom, boom, shot back up. Uh, this, is one, this one's looking excellent. I, I really like this chart here. Contango is right at the top of its pattern. It's probably going to break to the upside if we see oil have some strength. This one's also looking pretty good and one to watch. I'd like to see a breakout and a cheetah speed higher. Yeah, Centennial, this is definitely cheetah speeds here. Next, Southwestern Energy, it broke its downtrend. Looking fantastic. It's just breaking out of this garbage congestion area and is about to head on up. Intero Resources in the same position as Southwestern Energy. 
fantastic looking chart. LPI, I know some people were talking about Laredo Petroleum Holdings in the comment section, just peeking its head out. This looks fantastic to be entering. LPI, I like how you have a low, a higher low, and then it blew right through this resistance. You might see a back test here, and then boom, higher. This is one to watch. Next is Grand Tierra Energy. It's right at its downtrend line. It touched it and kissed it, came back down and rest in a little bit before this goes. We also have a bunch of sellers right here. So it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make it. Just give it some time. Tellurin. Again, this is on the weekly chart. See this big move higher? There's not much resistance in this, this area. Up to about five bucks. This thing's going to get literally sucked up to five bucks possibly, or even seven. Somewhere in there. This could be a very big move to the upside. Birchcliff Energy looking good, peeking its head out just above this downtrend. We've got two big downtrend lines. It breaks these downtrend lines, off to the races. Advantage Oil broke its downtrend and we're kind of coming across in this other pattern. It's right at the top of it. We break to the upside, looking good if it breaks. Crew Energy, this is a very small natural gas company has very large land holdings. Someone was looking for a, a small natural gas company here. This one might be it. Broke its downtrend. We're right there. Good time to pick up some shares if you like crew energy. Mosaic. On a weekly basis, it hasn't broke yet. We're right there. I think it's going to break to the upside and off to the races. We Obviously, we might break and do a back test, but eventually it will move on up pretty well. Archer Daniels Midland. Another clear break to the upside. Looking fantastic. Uh, this is one that I own. I own Mosaic and Archer Daniels Midland. Uh, but this one's looking very good to, to continue on up to the upside. So I, I wanted to chart these all on a weekly basis to see what they look like. Some of these oil companies look absolutely fantastic. Oil and natural gas. The Archer Daniels Midland looks absolutely great. Um, and all the diversified miners, I mean, they look ready to rip it. Uh, gold and silver, give it some time. It will come. The, con the market conditions are there, and it's extremely important to understand the market conditions. I'll do another video on market conditions so everybody understands what I'm looking at. I know we've got a lot of new subscribers. If you guys like this content and want to be a part of our community, you know, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It's that easy. Just subscribe. Watch for these videos to come out. Uh, you'll see a lot of these, these large chart patterns being broken, and that's typically when I like to, to load up. Uh, or add to positions. You guys, you know, I, I appreciate you guys listening. This is Finding Value.